Hello, this is Mr. Singleton. I am one of the associate directors for Outward Academy. This is a lesson just on cell division. Okay, and I've just shown you this specification so you know what it's about, what the lesson's going to be about, and what we're going to go through. So the first bit that AQA want you to know is about chromosomes and where they're found. So we're going to look at DNA, we're going to look at genes, uh, we're going to look at chromosomes and where they are found. Then we're going to look at mitosis and something called the cell cycle. So this is basically how a cell goes from being one cell into two cells and so on and so forth. And um, so these are all the little bits we're going to go through in this lesson. We're talking about how cells will duplicate their organelles and um, how they then divide into two. Really important, please make sure that you understand before you start this lesson, things like ribosomes, mitochondria and um, things like the nucleus. There's a lesson um, which is just called prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. It's the first lesson actually uh, in this whole thing um, that helps you to understand that. So go back if you need to. They're all on the YouTube channel. Um, but then if not, start this lesson. So this is just a bit of a recap from some of the previous lessons. If you need to go back over those lessons, please do. Just go onto the YouTube channel or ask your teacher for the lesson. I want you to think about how these cells are adapted to carry out their function. So there are three cells there. There is a sperm cell, a root hair cell, and a ciliated epithelial cell. So just on a whiteboard or in your book, really rough, have a think about how those cells are adapted to do their job. I'll give you two minutes. Off you go. Okay, you've got one more minute left. Thirty more seconds. Right, let's go through some of these answers then. A sperm cell has what a tail and you're allowed to put tail its scientific name is a flagellum and that's to help it swim or to move the cell it's also got lots of mitochondria and that is to release energy needed for movement it does that by aerobic respiration the root hair cells in a plant these are at the bottom of the plant they're the bits that collect in the water and the minerals they have really long hair like extensions and that increases the surface area of the cell and that allows it to absorb as much water as possible or as many minerals as possible. And then the ciliated epithelial cells, they also have hair-like extensions 
But that and they're found in like the trachea, uh, the windpipe, or the uh, fallopian tube in the uh, female reproductive organs, and that's to move um, things around. So in terms of the trachea, it's to move mucus out of the throat and into your mouth so you can cough up your phlegm. In your fallopian tubes, or in the female's fallopian tubes even, it's to move the egg along uh, to the uterus. They've also got a lot of mitochondria in there to release a lot of the energy needed to like move those hair-like extensions. If you're not sure of them, go back onto that lesson, have a listen through them, make sure you know them, and then we'll get on to this, which is mitosis and the cell cycle. So in your books, if you have your books, write down the title, Mitosis and the Cell Cycle. Make sure you underline it. If you don't have your book, it'd be great to make some notes. There's obviously a revision card um, bit at the end of this lesson. So you can start writing that onto your revision card, Mitosis and the Cell Cycle. It's for Biology Paper 1, although it does come in a little bit into Biology Paper 2. Um, but primarily, you need to know it for Biology Paper 1. I'll give you another 30 seconds just to write those down. So the challenge for today's lesson is describe the genetic material in a eukaryotic cell. So that's just describe what DNA is, what genes are, what chromosomes are, etc. And the aspire is to explain the different stages of the cell cycle. Lots of times we talk about cells and, and unfortunately sometimes we don't talk about what a cell actually is. The definition really is just the smallest functioning unit of an organism and, lo and they taint, contain lots of these organelles and lots of parts of cells. Again, if you're not sure on those parts of cells, it'd be really good to go back onto that YouTube channel and have a look at what the parts of cells are. A cell can be life, so you can have a single celled organism, but many times these cells group together form um, multicellular organisms. So basic building block of life. It's the kind of thing we look for. If we go to like Mars or Jupiter or anywhere, we kind of look for cells to see if something is living. Inside your cell, you will have this thing called DNA. And DNA are large polymers of what we call nucleotides. So it's just this big long chain of nucleotide all um, linked together. And we call it a double helix structure. If you're doing triple biology, you need to know much more about that for paper two. Um, but if you know it's a double helix, that means it's got two sides to it. And the helix is this twist. It's often called like an alpha helix because of how much it's twisted. Um, so on the right hand side there, that's a, that's a picture of some DNA. And actually that DNA is splitting up if you can see those nucleotides, uh, well the bases there are, are a gene. And be careful with this one. A gene is a section of a chromosome. So these chromosomes just hold the genes. And one gene codes for making one particular protein. Proteins are hugely important in your body. So proteins make up your skin. Um, you've got elastic, elastin in your skin, which makes it a bit stretchy. But you've also got keratin, which is, makes it stronger and waterproof. But then you've also got all your enzymes and you know, remember your enzymes control respiration. So without those proteins, you would be dead. Um, so just be aware that that's how important these genes are. So 
a tiny part of your chromosome will be one gene and that gene code for making a certain protein. The gene is made up of DNA. So DNA is a small thing, uh, a strand of DNA. So some of that DNA will make up a gene and then loads of genes make up a chromosome, which is what we'll move on to now. So basically these chromosomes are just long strands, massive long strands um, of DNA. You, you've got about two meters in every um, cell in your body. So every every cell has about two meters worth of DNA. And it's just really, really tightly, roundly, roundly packed into these structures called chromosomes. You've got 46 in the human body. You get a pair from your mom and a pair from your dad. And then they come together to make your 46 chromosomes. The only cells in your body which don't have these uh, are sperm cells or egg cells or what we call gametes, uh, just sex cells. Uh, they obviously just have 23 and that's it because then when they fertilize the egg cell, they get the other 23. So you get 46 in total. And uh, AQA might throw this in. The other cell that doesn't have any chromosomes is your red blood cells. And that's just because they don't have a nucleus. So I want you to record what you think a cell is, what you think DNA is, chromosomes and genes. I've just gone through them. You're in a very lucky position. If you're struggling, just take the video back and listen to me again. Um, I'll give you, let's see, there's four there. So I'll give you uh, four minutes to try and come up with a definition for what a cell is, DNA, chromosome and genes. Off you go.
so the cell is the basic unit block of life. DNA is a polymer, which is a double helix structure. You might put it made up of nucleotides, that's fine. Chromosomes are structures which hold genes, and it's made up of DNA. Uh, you may also put that as 46 in a human, or 23 pairs, and genes code for making proteins. So I want you to go on to Google Quiz and have a go at those questions. I'll give you five minutes to get those questions done. Off you go. You've got one more minute.
that is the challenge done. So we've looked at the genetic material in a eukaryotic plant and we've not, not plant, cell. We've not looked at a prokaryotic cell. That's uh, a bit later on in the lessons. Now we're going to look at the different stages of this, this thing called the cell cycle. Now a cell cycle is just how a cell moves from being one cell and moves into being two cells. And it goes through about 50 of these through all of its kind of life. And then it actually programs itself to die after about 50 divisions. So it'll go through about 50 divisions and then it will uh, basically kill itself because it could end up harming you if it doesn't. Interestingly enough, cancer cells don't do this. They carry on going through lots and lots of divisions. And that's why they make tumors. So I just want you to think, you uh, and everybody, because I don't want you to think about this too much, but you started life as a single cell, uh, a sperm cell, fertilized an egg cell, and you became something called a zygote. So that is a fertilized egg cell. And at that point, you had 46 chromosomes, and now you have grown into, well, an average human has about 37 trillion cells. So that one cell has, has gone and changed into, well, a whole lot of cells uh, and, and made a, an organism. So how has that happened? What's, that, what's happened to that cell? I'll just give you a little bit of thinking time. So what's happened is that cell has reproduced its and <laughs> interestingly in science when we say it multiplies and it divides it's, it's the same thing so when we talk about a cell multiplying that just means it's gone into two but we also talk about that cell dividing and that means it's divided into two so there's uh three stages to this there is a stage where all that stuff inside a cell and when i say stuff i mean mitochondria ribosomes dna everything like that all of that has to double first because otherwise it's going to split and and the two new cells have got nothing in there or very little in there so the first thing that has to happen when that cell reproduces is it's got to duplicate everything so ribosomes mitochondria will replicate so there's twice as many in there and all of the dna replicates so instead at that point of having 46 chromosomes you'll actually have 92 just before it's about to split it then goes through something called mitosis and if you have to imagine this. I've got a slide. Uh, next slide shows a bit of a picture of this one. Um, so one set, they all line up in the middle of the middle of the cell. All those chromosomes, all those 92 chromosomes line up in the middle of the nucleus. And then it, it, they are pulled from one side, uh, pulled to one side. So 46 go one way to the left, let's say, and 46 go to the right. So these little spindles actually attached to the chromosomes and they pull them to the opposite ends of the cell. And then we have something called cleavering. Think about a cleaver knife, uh, which is a cleaver that splits into two. So it will divide the cell. It will form new membranes around that. And then you've got two genetically identical cells. And they are called clones because they are genetically the exact same as each other. I'll show you diagram here. So the first stage is... And, and obviously your cell has more DNA than this, but putting on 92 chromosomes would have been a nightmare. So your DNA replicates, and that is the first stage, just duplication. The next stage is mitosis. So you see these little fibers, these little strands that are, client, are attaching to the chromosomes, and they pull them to the opposite ends of the cell. And then you get cleavering where you get these two cells being made. And they're both identical. They're called daughter cells because they're made from an original parent cell. And they're both made from that original cell. They're the exact same as that cell. And one cell becomes two cells. Genetically identical clones. So I want you to have a look at that. This is this was a, ex, a exam question, actually, on one of the first specification, uh, uh, specimen tests, we call them. So I want you to try and have a look at that and see if you can put them in order of what happens first. So where is the... Lots and lots of DNA, and then where they start to line up, and then where they've been pulled to a side, and then where is it actually dividing into two cells. I'll give you 30 seconds. It's just an interesting one to do. It was on a specimen paper. It's not been on since. I say that, but, you know, we're in 2020. You might be listening to this way in the future. Um, 
So I'll just have a look at it, see if we can put it in there. I'll give you 30 seconds. Just a quick one. So C, and this is just so you get to see the pictures. C, that is duplicating. You can see that there's a lot of chromosomes in there um, and it's duplicated. Then it goes for, to B, and that is the chromosomes. There's the little black bits. They're all lining up on the equator. And then D is showing it being pulled to the other side of each cell. So that's it splitting. And then A, that big line down the middle, that's the new cell membrane being formed. All right, so just so you can see it through a, a microscope. So I want you to have a go in your book at describing the stages of the cell cycle. There are three bits. This would be like a six mark question. So there are three bits that you need to remember. So if you can write those three bits down, you're probably going to get at least two, if not three marks, and then just say a little bit about what happens in each stage. It's a six mark question. So you get six minutes, have a good go at it. It's a bit of writing. Uh, it's just so that when you come to those six mark questions, it's not daunting. You know how to set them out. You know what you need to do with them. So just think about those three bits. And this is a great thing about a six mark question. If you forget one bit, but you can talk about the other two bits, you're still going to pick up a fair few marks. So have a good go with it. See what you can write. I'll give you six minutes, six mark question. Off you go.
Okay, you've got another three minutes. So and these are the things that we need to check for whenever we're doing it. So we remember proud. So that is you've written in pen, you've used a ruler, any crossing out, make sure you just put a single line through. You've underlined your title and you've got dating. So I just want you to make sure you've got the spellings right. Look down below. So you should have used um, things like replicates, divides, cleavering and things like that. Name the three stages and then describe them. So here's what kind of you should have had. Um, so before it actually goes and divides, organelles duplicate, and you might have put DNA duplicates or chromosomes duplicate. They're all acceptable. <clears throat> then you've got to say that the chromosomes will split to each side of the cell so that you might have said they line up in the middle of the cell and then move to each end of the cell. That's fine. And that's called mitosis. And then you've got cleavering, which occurs, and that splits the two cell cells into two. And you might talk about identical cells that will get you a mark or the clones of cells you might talk to about a new cell membrane being formed all of those are great answers okay so just have a look at how many you would have got uh, mark it out of six so it's google quiz have a go at the google quiz now uh, a couple of questions on mitosis and cell division and the cell cycle off you go
You've got one more minute left. So that is, we're now coming into the end of this lesson. We've done what type of, uh, sorry, done. We've described the type of genetic material in a cell is, and we've also looked at the different stages of a cell cycle. I just want to recap it, okay? I just want to make sure you've got this properly. It's all about recalling and making sure you've understood everything. So just four quick questions there. You just do this on a whiteboard. I'm quite happy if you're doing this on a whiteboard. Or just quickly in your book, one, two, three, four, uh, pretty much uh, one or two mark questions or word questions. Where are cells, where in cells are chromosomes found? I'll let you write that down. Why do cells need to multiply? So what's the point of them um, doing this? Why, why do we need to go from, you know, why does this cell need to divide into two cells? What would happen to our cells if they didn't um, divide or carry out mitosis? And a nice easy one at the end, how many chromosomes does a human body cell have? Not including a sperm cell or an egg cell or a blood, red blood cell. Okay, let's go through these. So where in a cell is our chromosomes found? That's in the nucleus. The whole point of multiplying is so that you can grow or you can replace dead cells or damaged cells. So if I cut myself, then new cells are going to have to replace the old cells or where that cut is. So it's a bit of growth and repair. If our cells didn't go through mitosis, then we wouldn't have specialized cells and we wouldn't get past a single celled organism. And then the last one, how many chromosomes does a human body cell have? It's 46, or you can have 23 pairs, and you can really accept. So onto a revision card. If you're writing revision cards, brilliant. Well done to you. Um, this one is for biology paper one, so I, I would make a note of that up in the... I generally put it in the top right-hand side of your revision card, um, and these were the main points of the lesson. So cells contain a nucleus. Inside the nucleus are chromosomes, and those chromosomes hold genes. You might want to add in there that genes call for proteins and DNA makes up genes. So DNA is the smallest thing, then genes, then chromosomes, then the nucleus. Okay. Uh, for a cell to divide for growth and repair, the first thing it does is it duplicates. It goes through duplication and it duplicates all of its organelles and all of its DNA. Then the chromosomes split to each end of the cell so they line up on what we call the equator of the cell, the middle of that cell, and then it splits to each end. That makes sure that, you know, you have the right number of chromosomes in each cell, because if you don't, one of those cells isn't going to work because it isn't going to have the genes that it needs in order to function. One cell will have too many chromosomes and the other cell wouldn't have very many chromosomes, and that would be an issue. After that cell goes through, um, uh, goes through duplication and mitosis, then it goes through cleavering, and that's when the cell splits. The whole process generally is called mitosis. Um, so the whole thing of cell dividing is called mitosis. The cells are going to be identical. We call them clones because they have the same DNA. You can pause this if I'm going to do fast. I'll give you another two minutes to write these down if you wish.
So there are exam questions for you to try uh, on the same folder. Have a go at them and well done. I'll see you on the next lesson.